Hey everybody, this is Chad, and this is what might be the first in a series about learning a language, uh, specifically learning Spanish. I've decided that I'm going to learn Spanish, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why, and how, and my experience in uh, learning language. So I have kind of a I want to call it kind of a pipe dream that someday I might live in Puerto Rico. So I feel like if I live in a Spanish speaking country, I should learn to speak Spanish. So that's one of the reasons why. Also, I have been taking um, lessons in uh, dance in salsa and bachata. And especially the salsa, a lot of the music is in Spanish. And I feel like, you know, if I if I could understand the words in the in the song, I could maybe sing along. I could maybe get a little bit better at uh, hearing the rhythm in the song, and it would make me a better salsa dancer. Um, also, because I am taking these classes and I'm kind of in the Latin dance community now, I guess um, I I know more people who speak Spanish, so I feel like it would be an asset to be able to speak to them in their native language, so to speak. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the reasons why Spanish. And um, as far as my experience with languages, um, when I was in high school, I took German for like two and a half years. And I feel like at the end of that two and a half years, I didn't have a great vocabulary, but I understood how it worked. You know, I could put sentences together and I could actually have conversations within my limited vocabulary. I have since I think lost most of the German but I think like if I studied it again it would come back more quickly than just trying to start from scratch um, which is more or less what I'm doing with Spanish. Um, I have done a little bit of Spanish study in the past. Um, let me talk first though about French. Um, I did take a year of French back in junior high and I didn't really apply myself very much, but I also took a semester when I went back to college. So, you know, I feel like some of it came back then, the French that I had. So I think French would be easier than Spanish, but because they're both romance languages, I hope that that's going to help me out just a little bit. But I do feel like, like when I was young, I, I would have been able to learn the language better. Um, but now I'm going to have to go the hard route. Um, let's see, the only other language experience I have is I have studied some Biblical Greek. Um, I spent a year on that. And again, that's one of those things that I probably have forgotten more than I learned, but I still know some of it. Um, but because of my study in language, I feel like I have an understanding of languages somewhat, how they work. Um, so I think that that's going to help me. But up until now, as far as Spanish studies have gone, gone um, I've done a little bit here and there. Um, I attended this one class once that was like only like four sessions maybe. And, you know, I feel like I learned a little bit, but you need more than that. I also once tried attending a community education class, class about Spanish. And that I didn't get very far into. Um, the only other serious, you know, I've done different things. Like there was this, this learning language for kids cartoon with Muzzy, this space monster. And like, I spent a lot of time watching that over and over again, hoping that would help me learn Spanish, but I don't know, it was kind of basic and I was only watching. I wasn't really speaking. And I feel like you have to speak if you're going to learn it. Um, Probably about a year ago, maybe not a year ago, I bought an online learning program with uh, Rocket Rocket Languages, Rocket Spanish, and I think it's good. But again, it's something that you have to you have to spend time doing. You have to actually stick to it. And I would tend to start the lessons, and the lessons would, I think run for about half an hour, most of them. Some of the earlier ones were shorter, but you know, I'd be listening, I'd be repeating, and I'd be like. Oh, it's just, uh, I don't know, I couldn't get engaged. But the thought of using the apps, you know, like doing something on the phone, and I don't know, that, that doesn't appeal to me. Maybe I should have tried that, but and maybe I will a little bit, because um, one of the things I decided was that, like some kind of, 
some kind of interactive, not just interactive, but like with real people would be good. So when I was looking at the apps again and I saw that Babbel had this thing with called Babbel Live, I thought, well, you know, that's you, you sign up for the for the Babbel Live service and then you can take classes online through Zoom and there would be up to six students and a teacher. So it would actually be another person there teaching you and other students may be helpful too. Um, but yeah, I, I, I decided that that was the way to go. So I signed up for that and my first class is tomorrow morning. Um, and then I have another class on Monday and my schedule's a little bit busy for the next week, so we're not going to be doing the Babel Live so much then, but then after next week, I'm really going to be going crazy, I think, on the Babel Live, just class and class, because learning a language, I think I already said this, it's a lot of work, but hopefully the classes will help me stay more engaged. Um, the other thing I've been doing that I just started recently was I found this lecture series put out by The Great Courses on learning Spanish. Um, I have watched the first four episodes, or not really episodes, the first four classes on that. And I think that especially because I think the Babel system is more kind of immersive and less kind of like an academic lecture. This is more the academic lecture, so that will give me that side of it. And yeah, so I've already watched four of those. So it's, it is kind of a fun class. I think the guy is engaging, um, but again, it's not, you know, it's really not interactive other than he tells you sometimes to repeat things. But he did, he did teach one thing about um, from Hamlet, to be or not to be, that is the question. He had you translate that into, into Spanish and speak it. So let's see if I can get this now. It's um, ser o no, yeah, yeah, I already botched it. Okay. Ser o no ser? Esa es la cuestión. There you go. That's my first Spanish sentence, sort of, and Shakespeare quote. So, and I love Hamlet. So, there we go. Um, anyway, um, so class tomorrow, another class on Monday. Plus, I will be, I will keep doing. You know, I said I had a busy schedule, but also these early classes are kind of hard to schedule if you don't have a lot of free time. So um, that's one thing. But like I said, in a week, I got a lot more free time. I'm really going to start hitting those live classes. Until then, I'm going to keep keep on watching this lecture series from Great Courses. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. But um, like I said, this might be the first in a series of... Uh, of how I learned to speak Spanish. Um, uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll get another one tomorrow. Maybe another one next week. Maybe this will be the only one you'll ever see. But anyway, that's the road I'm on and I'm ready to go. So thanks for watching.